Hey there weavers, welcome back. This is Grace with Tangled Webs Weaving and tonight I am starting a new project uh, that is again a plane weave uh, structure but it's one of those plane weave structures that is kind of magical because it doesn't look like plane weave. So uh, sticking with our theme of uh, St. Patrick's Day and green for March, I am going to be weaving some placemats with um, these two colors of yarn. Now this is a 3-2 mercerized cotton and I'm going to be putting um, just four threads of red in there as a zinger. And the weave structure I'm going to be using is called Log Cabin. Now if you're not familiar with Log Cabin, it is consists of um, alternating light and dark threads that are um, woven in stripes. And depending on whether you start with a dark thread or a light thread, you change the direction of the stripes. So it's, it's pretty interesting, but it does require you to uh, warp with uh, two threads, two different colored threads, a dark and a light, and alternating. So I demonstrated uh, the parking method in one of my previous videos where I was showing how you can uh, warp four threads and then park the thread, not cut it, and then warp four threads of a different color. And you can use that method um, for a lot of different uh, weave structures. It doesn't have to be log cabin or a plain weave or deflected double weave, which is the project that I was demonstrating. But um, if you're doing every other thread, that's a little tedious. So I thought what I would do is demonstrate warping with two threads at once. And this is a really easy technique. Now, the way that I learned how to do it is to keep both threads in the same cross. And that makes it a lot simpler. Well, you may say, well, but when I'm threading, how do I know which thread to take? Well, you take either the light one or the dark one. It doesn't matter. Whatever comes next in your threading pattern. Um, because we're going to be alternating dark light, dark light, dark light for 20 threads. And then we're going to switch that. And for the next 20 threads, we're going to weave or thread light, dark, light, dark, light, dark. And by doing that, it changes the stripes from uh, horizontal to vertical. So let's get started in warping. And I will show you how to warp with two threads at once. So we're going to take the green and the cream that I have here. And we're just going to hold them together. And I like to um, tie a slip knot in the end, tie them together. And then we're going to keep our cones separated. So we have the dark thread up here and the light thread hanging down. And I'm going to keep those separated. I'm not going to let the threads cross. And I'm just going to put those down on the floor. So now I'm going to take, and I'm going to slip the, um, my loop over my first peg here. And I think I need a little more light. That's better. All right, so we're going to keep our two threads separate. And the first um, 
10 passes because we're doing 20 threads holding two threads at once so we're going to do 10 passes we're going to keep the dark in the back and the light in front it really doesn't matter though if we started with them reversed but you want to keep them in this orientation always so what i do is i take and i put my finger between the two threads now my hand is going to stay in this orientation throughout the entire pass all the way up and then all the way down i'm not going to twist my hand Otherwise, I'm going to introduce twist into the whole warp length, and then they will get to be a tangled mess when you're weaving it. So what we're going to do, my cross is, is down here. I'm going to take and I'm going to bring my cross under and around this peg. Now, when I get to this point, I need my cones a little bit closer there. When I get to this point, instead of doing this, because that's going to cross my threads, I am going to take and grab the threads through here with my other hand. And I'm going to pull them over to the next peg that I'm uh, putting on. And then I'm going to bring my hand over again, grab, that other string out of the way and pull them over. Notice my hand is always staying in the same orientation, staying flat. Now, when I get up to here, I can use my hand to pull it over and I'm going to come down around this peg here that I'm going to go around. The other way that I can do it is keeping my hand flat, I can bring my hand around like this. And then I'm going to keep my hand flat and I'm going to push those back and do the same thing. Now, when I get down here to make my cross, it looks like I'm twisting my hand, but I'm not. I'm going to keep it flat. And this one went. That one was supposed to go that way. Okay. Um, I'm going to keep my hand flat. I'm going to bring this up, make my cross and over that peg. So you can see I've got two threads in this cross, but it doesn't matter um, that there's two threads in there. I have a cross. It's going to keep my threads organized. And if those two get crossed on themselves uh, right here at the cross, it's not a big deal. It's not going to have any issues with tension or anything like that. So then I notice I've still got my dark light orientation. So then I'm going to just do the same thing. And I know that I'm keeping everything organized. Can 
I need to get these strings out of my way. I know I'm keeping everything organized because if I look down at the cones of yarn, the, the yarn is not getting tangled around each itself between the two cones. So we know that we're doing good. All right, I've got, um, got two, four, six, eight. This is nine. And 10. Now, because I'm doing a specific type of uh, log cabin where there's a framing thread of dark, I need um, to put in a um, supplemental dark thread to balance the stripes of dark light, dark light, dark light, and end with a dark. And then I need to add a framing thread of dark. So because I'm adding two threads of dark, I can't really work two at a time right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to park the white thread over here and then I'm going to take my dark thread and if I just make a full pass that will give me my two threads. Okay now I did make two crosses right here. So this cross is not in the same, or these two threads aren't in the same cross uh, like these two threads are. And I only do that because I want both the dark and the light to end up on the same side of my peg so that I don't have issues with one coming from the top and one coming from the bottom. So now you'll notice that I am now in a light dark orientation by doing that. So we were doing dark light here and now we're going to do light dark and we'll do that for 10 passes. Let's see where I'm at here. So there is my dark dark. So now I've got two, four, six, eight, ten. Okay, so now I've got my ten passes of that. The next um, pass that I will do will be the light dark. Um, or I'm sorry, it would will be the dark light. I don't need to add an extra dark because it ends on a light um, and 
the next one starts on a dark, so that is going to frame it. So we are just going to continue our... Now here, we can do two, one of two things. Because we're only doing um, two threads, if they get crossed right here at um, this point, it's not going to be a big deal. I mean, when you're beaming on, they get crossed. Um, so I could twist these at this one point because this is this is going to be, get cut um, when I thread my heddles anyways, and it really doesn't uh, doesn't cause a problem. Or I could just continue to wind this as uh, light dark, and then when I thread them, um, they'll be. I'll just switch them at that point. But I'm I like to uh, keep it consistent, so I am going to twist it right there at the end, and then um, wind the next. Uh, ones in dark light. So now when I get up here, because one repeat is 10 passes of dark light, 10 passes of light dark, that's considered one repeat in my pattern. Um, I am going to change where I go under here um, so that I can use it as a counting cross almost. And we will just continue on. So I'll finish warping this up and then we can uh, take it over to the loom and I'm going to continue using the rigid huddle loom because it's a plain weave project and I want to really demonstrate to you um, how much can be done with just two shafts and there is no simpler loom than a rigid huddle loom. Well there probably is a backstrap loom is like a rigid huddle loom. It's um, as simple as two shafts um, if you want to do more than plain weave, you have to either do color and weave or you have to do pickup. So um, we will continue uh, on with that kind of that uh, theme and then we can see the magic of uh, Log Cabin. So I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. and. If you did like the video, give it a thumbs up, like, subscribe, tell all your friends about the channel. And thanks for watching. Happy weaving!